Simon must build something. We're going to build the subwoofer with a passive radiator. Almost by bits I have laying around the house, except for some weights for the passive radiator. So keep on watching for those sweet, sweet subsonic sounds. First off, let's look at the ingredients. We have the Dayton passive radiator, it's in 15 inch. And we have the Tang Bang 740Ps. And we have the Hypex DS4 400 watts AMS, I believe. In theory, it should be 800 watts when we push it down into 2 ohms load. To start things off, we are going to be cutting a lot of wood and gluing a lot of wood and stabling it together, so that's what's going on now. Here I'm making measurements for the flush mounting of the passive radiator. Always start by flush mounting and then cut the holes afterward so you have the hole in the middle to guide the router. Start by just skimming the surface and then go deeper until you have the required depth. By doing it this way you will have a much more clean cut. I'm using this anti-slip mat here, so when you cut all the way through, your piece is gonna stay in place. I'm rounding over the back side of the plates so the air should in theory move more cleanly over it. After gluing some of the plates together they won't perfectly aligned anymore so I had to cut them a little here to make it perfect. Here I'm assembling the inner side of the box and I get to use my stapler so I'm a happy guy. a lot of ideas with this box and uh, there's this reverse concept I was going after and uh, at the same time I wanted to make it a uh, passive radiator so it didn't have to have this massive long tube inside so you can make the enclosure a whole lot smaller. The other thing was when I had two drivers I knew I would have love to place them opposite and have some kind of uh, piece between them so I can get as much cancellation of vibration as humanly possible.
cutting long strips of bracing for the subwoofer box. I made it out of pretty thin MDF, so I need a lot of bracings, so I don't get any resonances at some frequencies. At the same time, MDF prices was going into the heavens, so I tried to save a little. So these pieces of braces is gonna make a little box that's going to contain the plate amp. Will also stiffen up the box, hopefully. I'm just looking to see if the bracing is on all squared up. Making the outside box. And he was thinking I was making a little subwoofer, but uh, as it turns out, it's always bigger than you expect. Said nobody ever. After the test fit, it was time to glue this thing together, inside anyways. And it went uh, easily on here, no problems. I made it so there was a little more space for the outside bracing, so I could come in with some seam sealer and make good contact all the way around. Here's some first person drilling for you. Now the thing about stuffing in a speaker box is you actually make the box bigger volume wise. It seems a little backwards that you put something in the box and then it becomes bigger. But volume wise it's like some kind of a spring. And this egg crake foam here is uh, some of the most springy material you can put in there. It's a good way to look at the air volume in the box like being a spring and it makes it easier for something like me to understand. I put the nails in in case of anything inside the box ever to come loose and be able to come down and disrupt the cone of the subwoofers or the passive radiator. I don't think it will, but that was the idea at the time.
Grizzly. Now the box is really sturdy. There's only one problem with it, and it's this area up here. It's kind of like a little bit hollow compared to everywhere else on the box. And it's because up here, it has this big area that isn't supported, that there hasn't any bracing in it. So it sounds a bit more. So I'm gonna put an extra layer up here to make it more dense. I decided on a fabric finish outside on the box, so I needed a place to stop the fabric and start the MDF. So I mounted these skirts on the inside rim. They'll be painted black eventually. So I made a little recess to put the fabric in with some nails. Stuff. And you can see this amazing man we painting right there. I'm hurting. It's so important to remove any kind of debris or dust from the surface before you start painting. This is some very inexpensive 1K paint. You can make the right viscosity by filling it with turpentine. You see the finished product, matte black. The glue had expired, so I just thought I went with it. Got a little bananas. There's something incredible nice about assembling something you have had in your mind for weeks. It feels incredible. Here yeah, I'm testing polarity. Seems like a good idea when you put two speakers in one box. Don't do it on a treater though, that would probably blow it.
seems a bit weird to put black nails in here, but this part will be facing upwards all the time, so I'm not so scaredy pants about it. Yeah, I'm installing my anti-vibration mechanism. In theory, the vibrations should be cancelling each other out. I'll be wiring these four ohm subs in uh, series, so it will be like two ohms for the amp. And I will be reversing the polarities because the speakers are reversed in the cabinet, aka subwoofer box. Always put the heat shrink as far away from the soldering area as possible, so you don't get it stuck anywhere it shouldn't be. The heat transfers quite fast through the wire. And if this was a treater, you would have to work quite fast so you didn't melt anything inside the voice coil. Yeah, I'm playing around with the bass to see how it impacts the sound. Going up in wave would be equal to putting a longer port in a subwoofer. So here it's playing, I had some issue, the mic couldn't uh, keep up with the volume so it cut out a lot of times and uh, I had some rattling from the table and the kitchen cabinets, you can hear it here. Also the connections was rattling a little so it wasn't a stable signal but I guess you can hear it play a little here anyways. It's actually extremely loud and plays extremely deep. I have an 18 inch uh, Dayton Ultimax in my lounge and I was actually uh, quite surprised how close they were. Here you can hear the mic clipping a lot.
cable does not like 30 hertz. Thank you so much for watching. This subwoofer build turned out much better than I imagined. In the beginning I wasn't even sure it would work. But apparently such a little channel like mine isn't worthy. So if you leave me a thumbs up, maybe I can remove this hammer from my head. See you next time on Must Build Something.